Do you think your digital marketing agency can scale? Think again. In this video, we're gonna break down why so many agencies, quote unquote, can't actually scale. We're gonna be uncovering what you should know about scaling your agency and how you might want to actually start building your business that's bigger than just you in a way that won't actually sacrifice your soul. Now, you've probably heard some internet influencer or someone saying that agencies don't scale or service businesses don't scale. And besides the fact that they're likely trying to sell you on something other than being a service provider or a digital marketing agency, what do they actually mean? See, what they think they're saying when they tell you that agencies don't scale is that in order to grow, so must your headcount. But what they are actually saying is one of two things. The first thing is, I don't know how to scale an agency, but another common reality is that you may not want to scale a traditional agency, and you might be wondering if there is another option. I know that was the case for me. Because the reality is this, the largest marketing agencies in the world create billions of dollars in revenue. Billions with a capital B. That, my friends, is scale. We have WPP that does 15.5 billion. Omnicom, 12.3 billion. Publicis does 12.3 billion. Now, while some of those are large holding companies that hold numerous digital and you know, experiential marketing agencies, Deloitte does 2.6 billion. Accenture does 4.4 billion. Ogilvy does 2.6 Point one billion. There are plenty of service-based businesses, agencies that actually generate a ton of money. Like I said, a lot of people that say agencies don't scale, what they think they're saying is if your revenue grows, so must your headcount. Now, for a small business provider, that can obviously be challenging because here's the reality. Many of these companies that I just mentioned have hundreds, if not thousands of employees, but their revenue per employee is in the hundreds of thousands. And as I talked about in a previous video, as a small agency and a service-based business, you want probably on the minimum, your revenue per full-time equivalent to be at least $250,000 per full-time equivalent. So yes, some of these large companies, they do scale by just simply selling more in revenue than the cost of their actual employee labor. The problem is that small agency owners, freelancers, people that are just, you know, you and I who are trying to get their business off the ground and make a really good income, they end up falling into kind of this accidental trap where they play the same game as some of these larger companies. They think that in order to keep growing revenue that they have to keep bringing on people. Now, the reason that typically happens is, is that they try to play the same game of being a full service agency where they offer all of the services to their end client. But the reality is when you become full service, you end up fragmenting your services and typically you end up having an unwieldy number of contractors, especially in the early days. Now, what makes that happen is actually a subtle distinction between full service and a la carte. When I worked for a company called Tracy Lock, which was a part of Omnicom, we did full service, but every single client went through all of our services. They got the full service. And so what most small agencies and freelancers deal with is they have a la carte services, meaning some clients have and utilize some of your services. Other clients utilize a separate set of services, meaning that not all clients are getting the full suite of services. And this is where all of that fragmentation happens. And so if you're a small agency, a consultant, or a freelancer and you're looking to grow, I want to share what I've found to be the best and simplest solution that I've yet to see when it comes to building a business that allows you to have a really great income without sacrificing your soul and working over 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Now we call that agency the alt agency model, an alternative way of building an agency. And it really addresses two key issues here. The first is that the economic and marketing climate is a whole lot different now than when some of these large agencies actually got started. The second thing is that in today's world, the lines between being an agency, a consultant, a coach, a trainer, selling courses and information has never been blurrier than it has right now with the advancement in technology, AI, and just the rapid growth of the internet, right? A lot of these companies got started in traditional media, traditional advertising. The whole digital marketing thing didn't really come about and continues to advance at a rapid pace, which has changed the game. And that's actually good news for you. And if you combine those things, the right combination for you, you're going to have an alternative agency. Now, the key distinction between an alternative agency that I see from a lot of the traditional agencies, instead of one income stream, you have three income streams. And each of these income streams is actually they're designed specifically for a different type of buyer segment. So the first segment is your clients. The second segment is your members. And the third segment is your customers. So clients, these are people that are going to get your minimum level of engagement 
management, and this is really to deliver your core capability. This is a specialized offer to solve a specific problem for a specific person. And typically what we've seen is that your clients pay no less than 25K annual lifetime or lifetime value. And just for the sake of this video, let's consider that annual value. So 25K roughly of value per year, all the way up to $100,000 plus per client per year. Now your members are going to get your training. They're going to get your coaching or your consulting. And all of this should be delivered around and complementary to your core capability. This is for the buyers who might not be able to afford your minimum level of engagement, or they have internal staff that could be the labor and they just need your thinking. And when I say thinking, what I really mean is your intellectual property, which honestly has an uncapped revenue potential. Now we've seen members range anywhere from 2,500 to 50 K a year, and it can be packaged, like I said, as a training program, workshops, coaching and consulting, membership, and even community. Which brings us to the third buyer segment, which is your customers. Now customers, this is where you sell your byproducts. Typically customers are going to get an experience that does not involve a human. This can range anywhere from you know 20 bucks for a book all the way up to $2,500, let's say. These are your books, your courses, templates, tools that you typically use to deliver to your clients and possibly even your members. Now, the types of offers that you will end up selling to your customers, these things actually are really great for acquiring customers and potentially even offsetting your acquisition costs as you go to scale. You've probably seen a lot of service providers that are running ads to books or to really low ticket items. And many of them are, if you look carefully and understand their business model, they're really just trying to buy customers customers instead of capture leads so that they can at least offset or almost break even on the capturing of a customer so that when they do sell you into one of their higher level services, that that's pure profit because they already covered their cost to bring you into their world with the sale of a customer related offer. The book, a template, a calculator could even be as simple as like a very simple SaaS solution. Now, making this model work, having clients, members and customers really requires you to start building your authority and your expert level status inside of your market, because not only will you be able to achieve the outcome because you'll have dozens, if not hundreds of reps with your clients that will have helped you develop a methodology, an approach that really serves as that intellectual property that trickles down into your different offers that are inside of, you know, that member type tier and even down to your customer product offering. So developing that authority, that expertise inside of your market will attract more people that necessarily won't be able to afford or need your done for you services, but they're going to want to install your way of thinking. They're going to want to install your systems, your methodology, your approach, and possibly even have their team implement it. So if you're looking to build the agency of the future where you can have a really high income with a lean and mean team, scale profits, but without having to scale overhead, this is the model that I've seen to work for, for more and more agencies, freelancers, service providers, and it's not going anywhere. There's clearly a lot of opportunity for you to potentially grow your business by adding offers for members and customers customers if you haven't done so already and you're only still serving clients. So the question is, which one do you see as the biggest opportunity for you? I want to know. Comment down in the comment section below. I'll meet you there. And if you're looking to build a self-managing agency, which having clients, members and customers will help you do, go check out this video right here.